Global Affairs Canada had two weeks to tell their American counterparts the news of terrorist Omar Khadr's multi-million dollar settlement. They did not. But that's also how Trudeau's government treated the Spear family. Global Affairs Canada didn't warn Omar Khadr's living victims about the payout either. We'll show you the exclusive access to information documents today. Omar Cotter, the Canadian son of Al-Qaeda royalty who killed a U.S. Army medic named Christopher Spear and maimed a soldier named Lane Morris while fighting for enemy forces in Afghanistan, was convicted and sentenced by a jury at Gitmo for 40 years for war crimes. But he wouldn't stay there. As part of an Obama administration political pressure campaign, Canada repatriated Cotter and when he got back, he quickly went about using our legal system against us. His sentence was reduced to just bail, and he walks the streets of Edmonton a very free man. He's also a very rich man, thanks to Canadian taxpayers. After claiming he was the victim of human rights abuses at the hands of our American friends while serving time in that U.S. prison, Gitmo, and without ever proceeding to a trial where real evidence would be presented, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau struck a deal and delivered Cotter a $10.5 million payout for Canada's failure to intervene on behalf of this convicted killer. Worse still, Trudeau structured the payout to Cotter in secrecy, making it difficult for Cotter's living victims to execute the $134 million wrongful death judgment they have against him in a U.S. court. We wanted to know how global affairs dealt with the American fallout from this horrible payout. So we asked Global Affairs for emails, briefing notes, memoranda or other products to and from the Canadian Embassy and consulates in the United States on the American reaction to the Omar Khadr lawsuit and settlement with the Canadian government. We also asked them to include any records on meetings between Canadian and American officials on the same subject. And the date range was from June 1st to July 11th, 2017. We just received these documents over two years later, 137 pages of them. We don't actually see a lot of communication with angry Americans, but that's because global affairs was hardly talking to their American counterparts at all. Even more bizarre, global affairs did not warn the living victims of Omar Khadr that Trudeau made their dad's killer a multimillionaire because it looks like they didn't think they had to warn them. Let's start at the very beginning, page two. Bureaucrats and diplomats get sworn to secrecy when the deal with the devil was reached in this June 23rd, 2017 email. The government of Canada has reached a settlement agreement with Mr. Omar Cotter. For the present, both the fact of the settlement and the details of the settlement are strictly confidential. As part of the settlement, the government of Canada will be making an apology. This apology will be public. And at that time, the fact of the settlement will become public. But its details, including financial, will remain confidential. I want to stress that this is essential, that the fact of the settlement remain confidential for now. So the government was never going to tell you or anyone else the amount of Cotter's $10 million windfall from the get-go. It was going to remain confidential until it just wasn't confidential anymore. On page 16, we see Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale's final talking points. However, much of the talking points are redacted, but we discover he informed Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly about the settlement by June 28th. But the Canadian officials did not go further with notifications of their American counterparts. As we find out in subsequent emails, when the news of the settlement gets leaked to the media, the Americans end up getting blindsided on Independence Day of all days. Now on page 22, we can see the internal debate over when and how to inform the Americans, especially with our embassy closed for the Canada Day July 4th weekend. One bureaucrat was, quote, strongly supportive of a heads up. Yeah, you think? 
On page 43, this is July 4th, 2017, the news of the settlement has now leaked to the media. And so diplomats and bureaucrats are contemplating speeding up the official announcement to the public. And of course, their American offices are closed for July 4th. The media is reporting on the Cotter settlement this morning. Links below. As a result, it is possible that we will end up making the announcement earlier than anticipated, possibly today. No decision has been taken on that yet, but we will advise. I realize you are closed today, but you may wish to reach out to your contacts as soon as practical and reasonable. So what are we learning here? Diplomats in the Canadian Washington Embassy still hadn't told the Americans by July 4th, beyond Goodale giving Secretary Kelly the heads up five days after the settlement was reached. However, the people who truly deserved heads up never got one. Page 31, this is an official prepared talking point note meant to address anticipated media questions, confirming that Global Affairs Canada never once spoke to the Spear family. That's right. Canadian diplomats did not give the living victims of Omar Khadr a courtesy call before our groper-in-chief made their loved one's killer a multi-millionaire, courtesy of the taxpayer. Question 10. Has the Spears family been informed? The Government of Canada has not communicated with the Spears family. They were not a party to this action. Mr. Cotter's claim was against the Government of Canada for actions taken during the period that he was held by U.S. authorities. I think it says it all that Global Affairs Canada couldn't even get the name of Omar Cotter's victim right. It's Sergeant Christopher Spear, not Spears. Have some respect. And common human decency should have dictated that the widow of Sergeant Christopher Spear and his two children were not blindsided by this news. They were forced to find out, like everyone else, that the killer of their hero husband and father was made a very rich man by the Canadian Prime Minister in media reports. It's a devastating insult on top of a heart-wrenching injury. And Lane Morris, the Green Beret that was blinded by Omar Cotter, he's not even mentioned once in any of this. He's not even a passing thought. At Rebel News, we do investigative journalism that you won't see done in the mainstream media. We are fiercely independent and we will never take a dime in support from any government. However, because of that, we rely on the support of people like you at home. I have good news though. One of the best ways to support us actually gets you a little something in return. Just treat yourself to a premium subscription and you'll get access to our premium content. Just go to premium.rebelnews.com.